This is a second movie in a two-part series about using the live paint bucket tool to more easily create um, compound shapes and, and colored areas. Now I started off with this image that I redrew using the ellipse tool and then I filled it in using the live paint bucket tool and now I'm going to show you how to how to place gradients inside each of these areas and you'll notice in the original one there's lots of gradients every little colored orange and yellow area is a gradient and so to to start off with I'm going to I'm going to press uh, shift o which is going to bring up the artboard editing functionality and I'm just going to drag this over so I can have a bigger artboard to work with now I'm going to take this live paint group and just scoot it off to the side so that I can I can have both of these available for viewing as I'm editing the gradients. Now first I need to make some gradient swatches. I've got my solid color swatches up here and now I want to make some some gradient swatches. You can easily access the or apply different colors to your stroke and fill using the <clears throat> the little <clears throat> excuse me the keys right above the um, the command button on the right hand side of your keyboard the comma period and slash so if you press comma you get the solid fill if you press period you get gradient and if you press slash you get um, no fill no stroke or in this case no color applied so comma is solid period is gradient and slash is nothing so I want to I want to start making a gradient so I'm gonna press the period key already got my gradient panel up. I need to have both my gradient panel and my swatches panel up at the same time. So I'm just going to drag them off to the side here. And so the first one I want to do is the white to yellow gradient. And I'm just going to drag those swatches down down here. That it should be a little bit more orange. So just drag the swatches onto the color the the gradient stops. And I'm going to make it radial. Now I want to I want to select that yellow area. So my first inclination would be to switch to the direct select tool and click on it. But it's selecting this entire circle, which is going to affect all kinds of other things. So I need to get a way to select just this yellow area right here. And the way you do that is with the live paint selection tool. It's kind of like the slice tool if you've ever done web design where you can make slices but then you can't select them unless you use the slice select tool. So this is the same idea. The, the live paint bucket areas are like special. You can't edit them, you know, and move them around using the the black arrow or the white arrow. So we have the the live paint bucket selection tool and we're just gonna click in that area and I want to apply this gradient to it. So I'm just going to press the period, the period key, because it's already I already had my gradient, you know, set up the way I wanted it. I forgot to make a swatch, so I'll do that now. But see how it's got this annoying texture? It's really hard to edit the gradient in here. So the way you do it, you have to hide something. And after a, a little experimenting, I figured out that if you hide edges it'll get rid of that annoying texture and it'll just it'll just um, it still will highlight the edges but it's it's for some reason um, where is it it's under view hide edges and show edges so I guess Illustrator treats this whole thing as an edge I would if I was designing it I would just treat the edge as an edge but apparently if you when you're showing the edges it's going to fill your gradient your live paint gradient with this annoying texture that prevents you from seeing what you're doing so go to a f uh, view hide edges and then you can see what you're doing so we, we've got it selected which is good and then we're going to go to the gradient tool and it's sort of now we can we can manipulate this better. 
So we're going to go and uh, adjust these colors a little bit. Make it not so orange, and then I'm going to make the yellow fill it in a little bit more. All right, and now I'm going to do this big red one here in the center. And again, the same thing. Choose a live paint selection tool, click on it, and you'll notice that now the fill color is red, as it should be. And so we're going to go back to our our swatches, and I'm going to make a new swatch. I'll just apply this one, this yellow one for now, and then swap out the colors. So it's sort of orange on one side. And then it's like a red down at the other side. And then I'll just make a new swatch for that. Now, using the gradient tool, I can apply the gradient. Normally when you're when you're working on a gradient, I'll make a new artboard over here so I can explain this. Oops. Normally when you are editing a gradient, the gradient annotator stays put and you can see it. So you can easily, you know, move the stops around, you can change the rotation, you can, you know, change the size of it. You can do all sorts of great things because the gradient annotator stays put. For some reason, when you're working in a live paint group, it doesn't stay put. Which is kind of annoying, but oh well, at least we can edit the gradients. So I'm just going to make this, this one a little bit deeper red at the bottom. Which is a little tough because I can't see the gradient annotator. There we go. That looks better. And so to apply the rest of your gradients, you just go through the same process. Choose the area that you want. Apply your gradient. Edit your gradient using the um, different colors in your swatches panel, edit the gradient stops, and then go to your gradient tool and wing it <laughs> because it, Illustrator doesn't really let you see what you're doing. We're getting there. And if you make a mistake on a gradient stop, you can just drag it right off the bottom, except if there's only two left, then you can't. You can also edit the gradient stops with a lot of precision using the up and down arrows here in these little fields. You can actually type in there. If you hold down shift, it goes, it jumps in 10% increments. And you can edit the gradient, the gradient stops individually. First click on it, make sure it's got the little black triangle above the gradient stop. And then you can actually edit, edit the color of the gradient. Again, it's really it's hard to tell it's hard to tell what you're editing when you can't see the gradient annotator.